Alrighty. Hey guys, it's Will. Hopefully you're having an amazing day today. So make sure to check your email if you're a part of the first access list for our five figure direct to consumer program. I just sent out the link. We just launched this new revolutionary program for offering your music direct to consumer. And I'm really excited for it. We've already uh, started to fill up. So go check it out. If you are on that first access list, then go check your email because I just released it and the program is now live. And the early bird discount that's $500 off the program is only available for the next 72 hours. So make sure to go take advantage of this early bird first access discount for the program. This is the best program I've ever made and it covers every single asset of direct to consumer music, but also direct to business music. Okay, so when you're an artist, a producer, uh, if you are a label, you have all of these different ways you can run your business. And today I want to talk about the right offer versus the wrong offer. So when you have the right offer for your music, it's going to be something that generates music sales for you and makes you money and builds a catalog of assets that every single month you can get that money from your music that you've released and it is something that is profitable for you. That's what makes it a business, right? So if you have the wrong offer for your music, well, people aren't gonna buy it. You're not gonna see any money come in and you're not going to really generate a profitable catalog. It's more just gonna be like sounds that you've put out that aren't getting any traction, really aren't making you any money at all. So I don't want you guys to be there. I want you guys to not let that happen to your music. I want it to be a profitable business for you. And that's why today we're sharing the right offer versus the wrong offer. So the first thing to determine uh, if you have the right offer or the wrong offer, sometimes you have um, a direct to business music offer. And that might be you've created a jingle for a company. So back in 2017, I created a song for Invisalign. It's a multi-billion dollar company, they make braces. I sold it to them for over $10,000 because they needed a customized song for their brand. So that's an example. Then I made a song for Dutch Bros. I don't know if you guys know, they're like coffee place. Okay, these are things that you can do is make jingles. So you might do jingles or you might do for your fans type of music. So this is the first determination you want to make whether you're an artist or a label that's helping your artists sell their music direct to consumer. Are they selling to a business or an entertainment center or are they selling to a consumer or a fan? So this is the first question you want to ask yourself about your music. Personally, I've had a lot of success selling to businesses. I find it to be really interesting. I think that they need more music in their business. There are sync licensing opportunities, entertainment, movies and things like that where they need specific uh, themed songs that I think are a fun way to make music for commercialization. So that's one way to do it. You can also go direct to consumer. Now, the way I like to do direct to consumer is by doing subscriptions. So getting paid for your music in this way. And so one thing that artists do is they, they put out their music on Spotify and they don't touch it. They don't do anything. And what happens? Well, they don't make really anything from their music, right? So how do you make money from the music? Well, when you're choosing between these two things, let's let's talk about what it looks like when you do the commercialization. So the commercialization would look like this. You find a local organization or you find a local company or you find a local entertainment center or, or it could be it doesn't have to be local, but a movie or a series that will need sounds. OK. That is direct to business, so that would be becoming the official artist of a sports group a sports entertainment place. Uh, maybe it's a soccer club, a football club, or it's going to the local coffee shop or the businesses that you have around, the orthodontists, the uh, different companies that are kind of a little bit cold and they need some spice up, they need some music, they need some theme songs. And you can sell direct to them with theme songs and ask them if they want it, make them a demo, create them a demo of, of a theme song for their store. So that's one way to do it. So you have direct to business, then you have to the entertainment center in that way. So you're going now sync licensing. This is where you have different sync websites that are looking for music in a certain theme or feeling. And so every time that music plays in that 
Netflix show or on that in that movie or wherever, you're gonna get paid when you get paid. So one thing that happens too is if you sell direct to a business, don't forget to make sure to try and get a cash license up front. I personally made the mistake of doing royalties only on one deal and it was way more profitable when on the next deal I negotiated with the business to do cash up front. So pay me for two years for the license and then I'll give you the cash or they give me the cash and then I give them the song and the license to be able to use it for two years. So that's that's um and, and in that you register copyright and stuff like that. But that's important. Think about how you can get as much cash up front to be able to fuel the music business and continue to grow it. And so that is the next thing. So the, la- the other part about direct consumer uh, marketing, you have first that, that side of direct to, to business, right? Business to business. Now you have direct to consumer. This is where you're actually selling to fans. This is the one to many. This isn't the business, the one to one business. This is the one to many. You create content. You have a lot of front end marketing. You're building your email list of fans and consumers. You are putting music out onto YouTube and on Instagram and Facebook and TikTok, and you're getting people to listen to your music and they're becoming fans. And when they become fans, they can go from that piece of content that you've created that they've been engaged with, and they can go to a place, an exclusive members area where they can get your songs before they're released, pre-save your music on Spotify. And when they do that, they get added to your email list or you can have a merch shop. And now you might offer them the subscription to your music. So that could be $10 a month, similar to Patreon. And you get 100 or 200 people to do that of your fans. And you you do that over the course of a year. Now you're making, you know, around $2,000 to $5,000 per month from your music. So that's, that's the subscription model. You could also take the music and you could create copies for each release and do digital downloads. And when people purchase those digital downloads, they get unlockable content like access to your concerts, a private group chat, exclusive music that hasn't been released, or maybe stems to a song that you're giving out to them. You can do Shopify, or you can go on a place like OpenSea and create a blockchain offer using NFTs and have a smart contract to where now they get something that's verified on the blockchain and they purchase your music in that way. And if it's ever sold or resold, you're going to get those second market royalties when it resells and they get to hold on to something that is a verified collectible on the blockchain that they can then use to maybe get into your concerts or get into a specific private area or group chat or a members area because they hold your music NFT. Another way that might be really creative for doing that is if you have your music on the blockchain, you go with copies of your music, let's say 100 copies of your song at $5 a piece, and you sell all of those, that'd be a $500 project. So you might do that for one release, right? And if you do that, then you would find that the uh, money that you make from there It's going to be uh, in crypto. It's going to be on the blockchain. And the NFT is now verified. You can see where all the holders of your music are. Who holds this song? Now you could actually make revenue or royalties from your music and then pay out back to the original owners of your NFTs. And they could hold royalty share on your music. And you could incentivize them to purchase your music in this way because they're going to get some of the royalties that you generate from streaming and from your recording royalties and you pay it out to the different holders of your music. And that's a really creative way to go direct consumer as well. So you can go direct consumer with more traditional ways like merch and t-shirts and hats and vinyl records, or you can get creative with it, create an NFT, create some exclusive experience. Maybe they get a one-time FaceTime call with you or they get to go to a concert with you or maybe it's just a sports event that you take them to the sports event. There's, There's lots of different ways where you can kind of engage with them and create an offer around the direct consumer music. And I find that to be really important for being creative around the marketing is, you know, thinking what they would really want. And then when you've built up this audience from doing all of the direct to consumer things like posting content, creating YouTube videos, creating a lot of content around each release and music, 
then you actually you know have this cool creative offer that you can offer to your fans that in most cases they're going to be fairly interested in so what can you do as far as the implementation of this well i would encourage you guys to absolutely uh, stay up to date on what's happening in the space. There's so many big artists that are offering their music, that are selling their music for hundreds of thousands of dollars or creating memberships and getting a couple hundred members in their music subscription and making thousands of dollars per month. I mean, it's really crazy to see all these different pockets of the internet where these independent artists and labels are growing their music business. And I would encourage you guys to stay up to date in that space. And also stay up to date in that music NFT space. We cover everything here on the channel. I would encourage you guys to subscribe and like this video. And if this video gets 50 likes, I would love to do a giveaway here in the future. That would be awesome. On top of that, guys, once again, this is the biggest sale ever that we're going to have for the direct to consumer uh, music program. So it's a five figure direct to consumer program and it's just released today. So make sure again, if you're on that first access list, you've gotten on that access list the two, the past two weeks, go check your email, make sure to go, you know, look in there because the offer is there. And also if you want to go there directly from this YouTube video, I'll leave the link down below and you guys can get started working with me on a weekly basis to grow your music business or label and scale it up using direct to consumer music sales. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.